we're starting a brand new way of teaching at the feast. We're starting something exciting. God is birthing a whole new generation of people who will hunger to follow the word. By book, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, story by story. We're gonna sit at the master's feet with total humility and allow the text as divinely inspired to speak to our hearts. Get ready because we're gonna start this journey of longing and really understanding God and His Word for you. Thank you so much again for joining our online feast. My name is Brother Audi Villaraza and I am the builder of Feast PICC AM session. How are you? I miss you so much. I know that we haven't been together physically for so long, but you know, God has been teaching me so many things, so many valuable things in the course of the last few weeks. In fact, one of the things that I learned this week is that the things that I thought were valuable in my life, and maybe some of you might even relate to this, I used to think that I needed to own so much clothes. But nowadays, what clothes are we using? You know, just pambahay, house clothes. In fact, I am so excited every single time I get to serve. Why? Because I get to wear decent clothes, you know, not pambahay clothes. And the other thing that I learned this week is I learned the five by five rule. What is the five by five rule? Well, here it is. If it's not going to matter in five years, don't waste five minutes worrying about it. Hey, Amen. That's a free lesson for all of you, by the way. Okay. Can you imagine? This is the third week that we have been doing our online feast. And again, thank you for being, for being such a faithful supporter. Right now, we are still in this beautiful series called Best Preaching Ever. Okay, this is talk three. We have been talking about the Beatitudes. This is where Jesus has been preaching or has, has preached on the Sermon on the Mount. And some of you don't know this, but a little trivia, a little trivia for you. See, there was a missing, a, a, a Beatitude that was not included that Matthew deleted at the last moment. At the last minute, Matthew deleted it. This is the Beatitude where Jesus said, blessed are the cross-eyed. Why? Because you will see Jesus twice. <laughs> I'm just trying to make you laugh right now, okay? I'm just trying to have some fun because we are locked down, but we are loaded for God's Word. Amen? So why don't we do this together? I know you're excited for the Word of God as we come in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everybody stretch your hands out wide, except if you are driving, of course. And then say this with me. Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved, I'm God's servant, and I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, feel free to lift it up together and we will sing. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Why don't you go ahead and turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. See, we have been talking about the Beatitudes, and this is where we revealed that this is not about some set of ethical standards that we all need to strive for. No, it's about 
this is where Jesus talks about who the VIP guest list of the people who will go into his kingdom. And we said it last week and the weeks before this, that it's actually the people who have been excluded, the people who you don't think is special, the people who are common, the people who are powerless. These are the people who will also get to enter into God's kingdom. And so let's read. Right now, Jesus is teaching about salt and light. Let's read it together if you have your Bible. It says, you are the salt of the earth. Everybody say, I am the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? No. Instead, it will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. But Jesus says, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, everybody say, in the same way. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see. Why? So that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Thank you so much for this beautiful word, Lord. And I invite you to pray. Everybody bow down your, hand, your, 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 your head and then close your eyes and then feel God's presence in this place. Father, we are bothered and troubled. We are limited in the ways that we can understand your word. For us, sometimes it, it's nonsense. It doesn't make sense. It has no meaning. But that's why we need the Holy Spirit to be the conductor, to be the orchestrator, because when the Holy Spirit gets activated, Father, we are able to understand in a clear way what you want to speak to us. So Holy Spirit, we invite you to speak. We invite you to speak over our situation. We invite you to heal us, to minister to us, to encourage us, to lift us up in this place where we are in. We are praying, Lord, for every person who is in pain, who is struggling, who is bothered, who is afraid, people who might have lost a loved one because of this disease. Father, we are praying that you show up right now in their situation. We are so grateful for the ways that you are going to speak. Thank you. May it come upon us and change us and inspire us so that we can walk out of this place and live a different life. May we be changed forever. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's people say, Amen and Amen. One more time, let's sing to the Word of God and say, Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If you believe that God is going to speak to you today, come on and clap your hands and give Him some praise. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Right about now, I am going to pass this next episode or this next next scene to the person who will speak and encourage us today. Please welcome Brother Bo Sanchez. I pray you and your family are doing well, safe, and protected, and provided for. That's my prayer for you and your family. Are you ready? Here's the Word of God. I want you to put your hand over your chest, and I want you to say, I'm a carrier. <laughs> I know that's shocking. Well, Bo, no, 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 no. I mean something else. Say it again. I'm a carrier. Say it and keep on saying it until the police comes and knock on your door to take you away. <laughs> I'm not talking about that, you know, because even before the pandemic, you and I are carriers. Now, what do I mean? If you are alive and if you are still breathing and if you are a human being, there is that phenomenon, that human phenomenon that you and I are carriers. And the big question is, what are you carrying? I mean, what are you carrying? Think with me. Do you know of a genuinely, authentically, really happy person? If you think of a very, very happy person, don't you notice that when he enters the room and starts just mingling and talking and chatting, don't you see that somewhere, somehow, after a while, that the people there, the, the, the happiness just, just rubs off on people? Or think of the very opposite. Think of a person who likes to complain. <laughs> like, like, like this person, he likes, you know, sighing many times a day. Ay, buhay, parang life. 
And then he will give you 34 reasons why he hates the world. Like, like every morning, it's as though he has this conviction that God has appointed him to be judge of the world, that he will criticize and he will complain about everything under the sun, like it's his mission statement in life. And, and again, you notice that when he enters the room and, and, and he's in a gathering and he starts spewing the poison of complaining and criticism left and right, left and right, again and again and again, you notice that the people around him will be a few notches, become more miserable. You know, he, he spreads misery. Think of a person who's fearful. Same thing with a person who's fearful and talks talking about his fear again and again and again. You know, people get bitten by the bug of fear around him. Or if the person is selfish and acts selfishly and thinks selfishly and speaks selfishly, guess what? The people around him get tempted to be selfish also. So here's my word for you. Instead of fear, instead of carrying fear, why not carry faith? And carry that faith to the people around you. Instead of selfishness, carry selflessness. And, and you will be able to share that selfless, selflessness to the people around you. You know, I'll give you one last example. Um, there's this friend of mine. She is extremely a grateful person. Amazing gratitude. She says the weirdest things. Like, like she, I remember she, she came into the office and, and she says the weirdest thing. She says, thank God I was trapped in traffic for three hours. You like the people in the office looked at her and, you know, I'm sure that what was in their mind, did, did you think she, she, she got shabu for breakfast? I mean, what, what, what's wrong with her? But then she explained. She says, you know, I thank God. I mean, I was, the traffic was so long. I was able to pray for so many people. Whoa. And I, and I said, whoa, this woman is in a different level. You know, I remember one time she, she talked to me. She said, you know, Brother Bo, thank God. Yesterday, our car broke down. Okay, you know what I wanted to tell her? I wanted to tell her, you know, I know of this good psychiatrist that, you know, she, you'd be able to, you know, share some of whatever's happening in your brain of yours, you know. But then again, she explained. She said, you know, Brother Mo, why I'm thanking God? Why our car broke down yesterday? Well, who knows? What if, what if the car didn't break down and my husband continued to drive and met an accident? I mean, I believe that all things work for good to those who love God. So thank God. You know, because of that friend of mine, I too have begun to say strange and weird things like, thank God for this lockdown. I'm able to have deeper relationships with my family. Thank God for this lockdown. I'm able to help people and help the frontliners and help the poor and the hungry. You know, opportunities have been opened up for me to be able to help them and, and do little acts of love. Thank God I'm able to reach people online. Thank God. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing how when, when you're with... And I'm, I'm going to ask you this question again. What are you caring because that is our message for today. We're talking about our key passage is Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. Now you ask any of the great cooks and they will tell you that they put salt in their food, not to make it salty. No, that's, that's not the purpose. The purpose is this, to, to, to think about it. I mean, I mean you, you bring out the flavor of the food which is the first reason why people use salt. Now, I don't know, I don't know about you, but, but salt is uh, pretty basic. Do you remember high school chemistry? I didn't like chemistry. It's my least favorite subject. I had nightmares about memorizing the periodic table, about my teacher and my classmates laughing at me because I did not, that, that's my nightmare. They were laughing at me because I did not know how many electrons were circling around zinc. Yeah. Now I can Google and I'll tell you 30 electrons. The only thing, <laughs> the only thing I remember about chemistry is that water is H2O, that's all I remember. <laughs> but now I can look up at Google. I wish there was Google before, no? But now I can look up that salt is sodium chloride. It is so, such, a, just a you know, combination of two things, sodium and, and chlorine. That's it. 
it's so big. No one, you know, man did not invent salt. It's there. It's there in nature. But it's used for so many things for thousands of years. And the first, first um, purpose is to bring out its flavor. The, the, that, that, the bring out the, the flavor of the food. You eat the food and then you say, wow, I, I taste the, the whatever it is, the vegetable or the, the, the mushroom or the, the, you know, the, the beef or something. You, you taste the original flavor of the food. That, that's the purpose of salt, number one. And hey, isn't that the purpose of God's love? When God's love hits you, you don't want people to look at you and say, oh, he's more religious. No, the purpose of, of God's love is when God's love hits you. You, you. you want people to like look at you and scratch their head and say, I can't put my finger on it, but he's become a better version of himself. He's, that, that's what you want. In fact, in fact the, the goal of, of being in a relationship with God is that when God comes into your life, you, you, you become, you, you're transformed. And you don't become a different person. You become a better person. You being a son, you know, you become a better son, a better wife, a better daughter, a better husband, a better accountant, a better chef. You become a better you. And, and I'd, I'd like, I'd like to, to share this. It's, you know, it's you allow the original you. I love this. You allow the original you, the one made in God's image, to come out. That's, that's what it is. And let me share with you my all-time favorite quote. Yes, from St. Irenaeus, bishop and martyr. And he says, The glory of God is man fully alive. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. That, that's, 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 that's it. That. And, and in fact, what, what I want to share with you is um, for, for all my life, I've been... I, I get I get thousands of messages in social media, and and eighty percent of them are people with huge problems. You know, um, people tell me, "Oh, brother Bo, for for your entertainment, you know, watch some telenovelas," and I say, "I don't need telenovelas. I read them every day, real, real telenovelas, like pang pelikula, yung mga the, the 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 stuff that people tell me to pray for and ask for advice." But once in a while. <laughs> I get these very rare letters of people who don't seem to have problems. I'll give you one example. There was this young guy, writes to me, Brother Bo, I'm 28 years old. My career is skyrocketing. They're training me now to become the vice president of this huge company. And last year, I just got married to this beautiful woman. And we have a beautiful relationship. She's pregnant. We're going to have a baby. I have a great relationship with my parents. I have a great relationship with my siblings. And so he was talking about how wonderful his life is. And then at the end of the letter, he says, I'm supposed to be happy. But I know there is something missing. And I do not know what it is. Brother Bo, what is missing in my life? And so I hurriedly answered his letter, and I, I loved his letter, and I, and I told him, your professional needs are met, your relational needs are met, your financial needs are met, how about your spiritual needs? Meet them. And then I said, you need Jesus, and you need to give and turn over your life to the King, so that your life now becomes, becomes one of, of saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? I invited him to the feast. I, and, and, and so my, my, my point is this, and I, I want to share this. This is, this is powerful. That if you don't fulfill your God purpose, life is meaningless. It really is. You know, life is bland. Life is tasteless. Because... Un unless God's love comes into your life and conquers your heart and compels you to mission, then you, you will be floating. And, and you, 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 you. So this is what God's love does. It, it brings out the original flavor, your, your God mission, your God purpose, your, 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 
the the the, the message version of the Bible of the key verse that we we read um, is is brings a nice angle to it. I'll read it for you. Let me tell you, this is the Matthew 5, yeah, verse 13, but message version of the Bible. Let me tell you why you are here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. You know, that, that's the reason why I think, if you think about it, what, what, how would you know a religious group is a cult? You'll know that upon some spiritual or religious conversion, the pers- that person is asked to, be, to give up his own individuality and his own personality and just become religious. No, that, that's not God's purpose. The purpose, is, the purpose of God is to bring out the best you, the image of God, the original image of God, and bring it out f- and, and you fulfilling His purpose in your life. And I pray, I pray that right now you discover your God purpose. And then you will realize that the the original you comes out and the, the, the God image comes out and it will be amazing. The second purpose of salt is this, to preserve food. Because in ancient times, there were no refrigerators. And that the best way to preserve food is through salt. You, you will be able to preserve food for weeks or for months by putting salt. Here's how salt does it. When, when salt is placed in food, what it does, it, it dehydrates it. It draws out the water. I'll tell you why. Because bacteria, um, like any ordinary living thing, needs water. And so, without water, Germs cannot live in a highly salty environment. Now, I want you to know that sin is like bacteria. For sin to grow, it needs a specific environment. And so if you want to defeat sin, what you do is you remove, you get rid of the environment where it grows. Now, why am I saying that to you? Because I want you to ask yourself that question. How, how can you get rid of the environment by which sin grows? When, we, when Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, based on context, Bible scholars will say this. And we don't appreciate it. We 20th century, westernized, highly individualized uh, thinking people, living in a highly individualized culture, we will not get it. Because when Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, in our modern imagination, we think that Jesus looks at one person and says, you, Mike, are the salt of the earth. Then turns to another person, you, Pamela, are are the salt of the earth. And goes to another person and says, you, Tecla, you are the salt of the earth. You know, no, but but no, what what Jesus was saying, when when you look at it, and the Bible scholars will tell you that Jesus was looking at a group of people. He was looking at a local church. He was looking at a local band of friends who, who love God and love one another and who are growing spiritually. That He says, you church are the salt of the earth. Because I believe that if you want to get rid of sin in your life, you don't do it directly. What you do is you love God together with a bunch of other God followers. Friends, in this time where we are being asked for social distancing, please let us redefine it. It is actually physical distancing that we need. But social distancing, we need our spiritual squad more than ever before. I I invite you, come on, connect with them online. You know, meet together online and share with each other and and talk together and, and laugh together and do life together. Yes, we need it more than ever before. Connect with your spiritual squad. The third reason why and the third purpose for salt is this, to be able to heal the sick. That's right. In ancient times, what they did was they used salt to disinfect wounds. I know for our, it's like, ouch, but yep, that's, that's how they did it during that time. And in, look around you. There are so many wounded people so many. And I've been serving God for the past 40 years, four decades. And I'm telling you from experience, I say this with full conviction, there is no other antidote 
in the world today that can heal people. But the antidote of God's amazing, unconditional love. God's love is the only antidote that can heal our wounds. And newsflash, you carry that antidote in your heart. You do. And that's why I pray when I ask, what are you carrying? I hope you can say God's love. And right now, I invite you to receive that love. I, I, I pray that, that, say this with me, put your hands over your chest and say, God carriers are healers. That's right. That's right. And, and, and you're, you're, as a spiritual family, as, as, as that local church, that spiritual squad that we talked about, you know, John 13 verse 35 says, Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Together, you become that fountain of God's love that can heal broken humanity. And I, I can look back at my life. And there were so many times when my little community was, was God's love to me and healed me. Yes, healed me. I remember a few years ago, I was going through a rough patch in my life and I, I felt useless. I wanted to quit. In fact, I wrote my resignation letter to, to the elders of the community and said, I've reached my level of incompetence. I, I, please look for a replacement for me. I, I can't do it anymore. But you see, it was my, my little band of brothers, my, my friends who would call me up, who would visit me, who would talk to me. Not, not necessarily talk to me, but just listen to me. They, they, they'll just, they were just there. And, and slowly, bit by bit, I recovered. And salt heals. God's love within the local community heals people. And I pray that you have that group of people in your life. Thank you so much, Brother Bo, for yet another encouraging message. Why don't we just take this time to clap our hands and appreciate Brother Bo for who he is. Thank you so much, Brother. I'm sure you're listening. We go back to the scripture that we have been reading in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. If you have your Bible, turn, turn to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. This is the part where Jesus is teaching about salt and light, okay? And he starts by saying, you are the salt of the earth. Everybody say, I am the salt of the earth. And then he asks this question, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? No. It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. See, many of you who are watching this right now, maybe you are someone who is familiar in the kitchen. You, you know your way around the kitchen. Like you, maybe you're a cook or you like cooking. You would know that there seems to be something off about this piece of scripture. Because then you know that salt actually never loses its saltiness, right? You can take a piece of container of salt Put it in your kitchen cupboard for years, you know, through different life stages, and you come back to it, it'll still be salty, right? For the same reason that there are people who, no matter how much they age, kahit gano na sila katanda, di ba? Meron pa rin alat. Tinan mo yung katabi mo. Wala lang. <laughs> but guess what? In the ancient times, actually salt lost its saltiness. You don't believe me? All right, I'll tell you how. This is why it's so important that you always go back to the context. Everybody say context. The context or the background when and where this was being written. Because none of you know this. This is a history lesson, all right? 2,000 years ago, the salt that they would often use would come from the Dead Sea. They would take pieces of stone that was covered in, in salt. And they would dunk that piece of stone in whatever broth or stew or soup that they were cooking until that salt would blend into that whole mixture. And then after they're done, they're going to take that piece of stone. And then after they, again, when they would cook, they would reuse that again and again and again until that stone would lose its saltiness. Hence the term, it will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. But of course, you didn't come here to learn about kitchenomics or else you would be better off watching a cooking show. No, you came here to learn something spiritual. So let me ask now a spiritual question. How in the world do we lose our spiritual saltiness? Would you like to know? Okay, I'll give you a clue. Look at all the Pharisees. Look at all the high priests back then. They were experts when it came to religion. I mean, they were 
they were masters of religion. They knew everything there is to know about religion. They knew everything about God. They, they knew how to worship Him, what offerings to make. In fact, they memorized Scripture. But here's the thing. Whenever people would encounter these Pharisees, for some reason, they would not feel the presence of God in those people. There was like a, some sort of disconnect. So here's the answer, all right? We lose our spiritual saltiness when we keep the form of religiosity in our life, but for some reason, we don't exhibit the love of God to the people around us. This, is, this explains why there are people in this world who are so religious. You know, they pray the rosary regularly, sometimes more than once a day. They go to mass regularly. They even know all the saints and they treat all the saints like they're BFFs. You know some people who are like that? But whenever they, you encounter them, they don't know how to treat people right. They gamble, they lie, they cheat, they steal. It's like they're just looking good on the outside, but on the inside, there is nothing. Let me try to explain this to you through a story of mine, all right? Once upon a time, I was playing basketball with, a, with some friends of mine in our village when our neighbor comes along with another friend in tow, somebody we've never met. Apparently, it was his cousin visiting from the U.S. And so anyway, we, we saw this guy, and this guy was just like the real deal. Man, he looked like a real basketball player. He was so tall, he was so athletic, and he was wearing the right basketball gear. You know, he, he, he was wearing the, the, the latest Nike shoes that we've never even seen before. It was like something he bought from the future. We were wearing nothing but, but mighty kids and grown Crosby's. Do you remember that? Some of you don't even know that. They were like the Air Jordans of my time, except without the Air and without the Jordan. <laughs> they were like the cheap, affordable kinds of rubber shoes back then. And he was wearing the latest Nike shoes. And he was completely decked up in basketball gear, like jersey here, basketball armband here. You know, he was like the real deal. And we all wanted him to be our teammates. Everybody wanted to be teams with him. But then when we started playing, man, I tell you, the moment he received the ball, he completely fumbled it lost the ball in the first possession. When he shot that ball, it hit nothing but air, nothing but thin air, I tell you. Apparently, we found out afterwards that this guy had only started playing about three weeks before that. So he was completely new to the game. If he played against my Lola, my Lola would have beat him in that game. And I'm not trying to brag or anything because I'm just trying to drive a point. You lose your spiritual saltiness when you think that just because you have the gear, you automatically have the game. Never gonna happen. Here's the second thing that Jesus says, all right? In verse 14, you are the light of the world. And then he gives us two illustrations about light. He describes light in two ways, all right? Here's the first way. He says, you are like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. You are like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. What is the significance of this? See, one of you need to, needs to know that when Matthew was writing this, there was no such thing called city lights. I mean, electricity hadn't even been invented yet. There were no such things as traffic lights or billboard lights or neon lights, nothing of that sort. The only thing that illuminated in the evening at night would be the power of the moon or maybe, you know, lamps and lanterns that they would burn. That's why imagine this for a moment. This is the reason why Jesus said this, okay? Imagine for a few moments that you were traveling from Galilee to Judea, which is about a three-day journey through the wilderness in complete black darkness. You couldn't see anything except for what the moon would reflect on. But then you would see the city of Jerusalem at a distance, shining in its glory. Because the city of Jerusalem was bright at night. They would light fires and torches and lanterns. You would not be able to miss Jerusalem even at a distance, right? So Jesus is merely saying that when you become the light of the world, when people encounter you, they will not miss your presence. When they see you, they will feel you. They will see you. They will encounter God who is in you. That's right. That's why, you, you know, some people, the moment you encounter them, it's like they're radiating this positivity. So much so that then when they leave, you feel like, whoa. 
I just left that, 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 that person. I feel like a, a, a plant that has just been watered, you know? But on the opposite side, there are people who we encounter, people who are, are radiating with so much negativity. The moment they leave your presence, it's like you feel this baggage on top of you. You know some people who are like that? A lot of people are still walking in darkness even up till now. God calls us to be the light to those people. You are the light of the world. Here's the second illustration that Jesus gives. Verse 15, he says, No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. None of you will put a lamp under your bed or under a basket, right? You will put a lampstand where it will shine brightest. See, these two illustrations that, that Jesus gives, it points to one thing and one thing alone. It's called elevation. Think about it. City on a hilltop, it's elevated. Lamp on a lampstand, it's elevated. Here's the question. Has God elevated you? Has He elevated your status in life? Has He made you abundant in an area in your life? Has He promoted you maybe in your job? Has He increased your finances in so many ways? Has He, has he increased your territory in life? Because you know, when God does that, when He elevates you, it's supposed to be not for your ego. It's not for your pride. It's not even supposed to be for your benefit. It's supposed to be for the benefit of God's kingdom. It should serve one purpose and one purpose alone. Ask me what? It's supposed to serve the purpose of God. It's supposed to shine the light of God in this world. See, the reason why God takes you higher is so that He can allow you to serve better. That's right. The reason why God brings you a little higher is so that you can serve Him better. You can serve the people around you better. Can I get a loud amen? Remember this. In fact, whenever a light or, or a lamp or even a torch or even a candle burns its light, did you know that it's actually consuming itself? It's consuming the oil. It's consuming the wax little by little. In the same way, when you become the light of the world, you need to learn how to have self-sacrifice. Shining God's light requires self-sacrifice. You need to learn how to give yourself to people, how to be selfless to people. And I get it. Some people might be saying, but you know, Brother Audie, I know myself too well. I'm not like that. I'm selfish. I'm not selfless. I'm the other way around. I can't do it. You know what? You are absolutely right. But let me show you how. Let me solve that for you. In the book of Matthew, it says that Jesus says, you are the light of the world. But in the book of John, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. So here's the truth. The only reason why you are able to become the light of the world is because the real light of the world is within you. Jesus lives within you. When Jesus is in you, when the Holy Spirit activates you, you are going to burn so bright for God. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to click the like button and tell people and all your friends and family about the inspiration they can receive here. And remember to subscribe and click the bell icon so that you get notified when we're going to upload the next inspiring video.